In the end, she gave up. There's nothing wrong with that. Her husband didn't think so. He was a coward. Being strong, not giving up. It was just his place to hide. He pushed away the pain so hard, he disconnected himself from the person he loved the most. Sometimes when you win, you lose. I wanted to make this video today for a number of different reasons. Firstly, the craft. Unfortunately, it's not the craft you saw in the intro. That was just something that I whopped together to get those rather beautiful looking cinematics, if you ask me personally. The craft in the actual video is still going to Juna. However, it's not got much of a purpose, or at least not in terms of science or exploration purposes. This craft is not designed to land on the surface of Juna. It is designed to crash, and that is to make a symbol. And as you can see, the rocket really isn't playing ball today. But thankfully, we managed to recover it, and the mission continues as normal. Brothers, what is this symbol? I hear you ask. Well, as of the 20th of December 2015, which isn't quite here yet, it's still got a few days to go as of uploading this video, it will be one year since I embarked upon my epic mission to Juna. If any of you new subscribers don't know what I'm on about, I'm going to link you the both of the videos in the description down below. And quite possibly, I think it's possibly my most awesome mission in KSP to date. Surprisingly, it was actually mistakes I made with the rendezvous procedure when in Juna orbit, and coupled with the fact that I went into a polar orbit around Juna rather than equatorial orbit, that actually made the, in, the mission as interesting as it actually was. And I remember the moment that I actually splashed down back in Kerbin's ocean after this mission and I'd managed to do it after like two weeks of trying and planning and various other different things, I just felt this overwhelming sense of elation and just achievement purely because of the fact that I'd managed to pull this mission back from the face of adversity, but also because of the fact that this was my first ever return mission, let alone my first ever crewed mission, to a uh, planet other than the Moon and Minmus. And I really really like looking Looking back at that video because not only does it remind me of the good old days of KSP.90, but it also gives me hope and also gives new players hope that whatever they do, eventually they will be able to accomplish Kerbal Space Program. I know a lot of the time Kerbal Space Program does seem like a very, very complex game and particularly for new players, it can seem a little bit daunting when you see all of these different YouTubers just going to, going to different planets as if it wasn't really much, much effort, but then you actually try yourself and you can't even get off the launch pad. And I know I felt that way for a definitely a long time. But through seeing the Juna video, you can see that even the pros make mistakes. Even though I don't really class myself as a pro, but even people who like the game and have been playing it for a long time still make mistakes. And mistakes is how we keep moving forward with this game and how we keep moving forward with life with general. That's why I'm sending something to crash into the surface of Juna today, because I could have just sent a Kerbal there and planted a flag there. However, it's not really the Kerbal way. I really wanted to sort of do something that sort of owed to my failures because if you guys watch my KSP mission series at any length at all, you will know that in every mission at least something goes wrong due to my sheer incompetence with this game, due to me cutting corners, etc, etc. Something always manages to go wrong. And so I thought it'd be a fitting tribute to this mission to actually slam something into the surface of Juna at high speed and record it all for your, you guys' viewing pleasure. Yeah! This totally wasn't going to be an actual mission that totally crashed and failed. This is a symbol. Yeah, definitely. Definitely? 
All right, it may have been another mission that kind of went belly up as soon as I got into Juna orbit. Not because of the amount of fuel, but just purely because I'm not used to landing on Juna yet. At least since the new aerodynamic model has come into play, because to be honest, I haven't done a whole lot of interplanetary travel all that much since 1.0 and 1.05 have been released. Don't know why, it's just I kind of haven't been playing Kerbal Space Program all that much. I've been more focusing on the low curb in orbit and moon type things. I have sent a few probes, although I haven't actually landed for a while. This is something I am trying to address and I am trying to learn again how to uh, how to land on planets because a lot has changed since, since point 90. And that's something that looking back on the Juna video does actually uh, make me, it makes me think. It makes me think how much KSP has actually changed um, in the past year with the release of 1.0, with the, with the whole resources system, with the new aerodynamics, the new buoyancy system, all those different changes. Just how different this game is to how it was when I released that Juno mission video a year ago. It really does go to show that a lot can really actually change in the year. And it is weird because my real life is actually completely different, not just because of the fact that I'm at college, but it is completely different to how it was a year ago. And if you watch my Christmas Eve video that I'll be putting out on Christmas Eve, um, I'll talk a little bit more in depth about that. Wow, this video is really getting deep at the moment. Let's get back onto KSP now, shall we? Let's actually get onto some actual KSP stuff. So firstly, you can see that the whole game doesn't exactly look very stock at the moment. Aside from the mod by Porkchet, which is the Habitation Plus mod or something like that, it's got a really strange name. I, I put it in uh, the description of one of my Operation Shamrock Dawn videos because that's one of the mods that I'm using in that. I think it's the only mod, well, the only parts mod anyway I'm using in that series. But this mod is... I don't even know really what mod it is, it's sort of like a conjunction of many different ones and I will leave a link to each of them in the description down below. And basically what it does is it makes KSP look absolutely beautiful. I managed to find this mod because I was looking at the uh, Scatterer video that I did called Realistic Water that I did a week or so ago and I looked and I thought I wonder if there are any other uh, beautification mods for Kerbal Space Program that will make the game look amazing, but also s not run terribly at like 5 FPS like Scatterer did. So I was searching around and I found this. I should probably state for the umpteenth time that I don't have a beefy PC. My PC is from 2013 and it, it really doesn't run KSP all that well when um, on high settings when you haven't got any mods installed or anything. But this thing, when I lowered some of the graphics settings ever so slightly, ran absolutely perfectly. And as you can see here, it looks just gorgeous. Like, I didn't drop below 30 frames per second, like, once throughout the whole time I played this. Obviously, you can't really see it here because it's sped up to four times normal speed, but... I, it, the running of this is just so smooth and this this mod and all the mods that are included are just so well optimized So I can't really recommend it enough So I'll leave the links to all the mods in the description down below you can get your game running like this Hopefully so yeah, that's pretty much gonna round it off for this episode guys as we descend through the hazy atmosphere of Juna here And I check my recording one more thing before I go I do want to ask I did ask on this week's KSP news show But I'm gonna ask again would you guys actually be interested in me doing a Brian Cox wonders of the solar system style documentary, only instead of the planets in the solar system, I'll do the planets in the Kerbal system. I kind of want to do some real life stuff in there as well, similar to how you have the sort of interludes in the actual documentary um, of the sol wonders of the solar system. I want to know if you guys want to see that. If you do, then do let me know in the comments down below. But as we smash into the surface, it's a good time for me to say, my name is Bradders, and as always, peace out.